welcome, beloved community. We are back again with yet another installment of the People's Water Board Coalition's Water Wednesday's webcast. And today, as always, I am here with my most beloved co-host, Ms. Valerie Jean. Hi, everyone. And we can't forget our behind-the-scenes tech person extraordinaire, Miss Angelica. is <laughs> awesome, does an awesome job. And today, people, we are here to talk about an issue that I'm sure you've heard us speak about before but we're re- revisiting it because it is that vitally important. Today we have Miss Julie Geisinger. She is the Line 5 organizer with the Sierra Club and Oil and Water Don't Mix. And she's also here to talk to us today about an upcoming film documentary at the State Theater in Ann Arbor called Trouble that is coming out this weekend. Thank you so much for being here, Julie. We really, really appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to come on our show. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. It's such an important um, movie and documentary. Uh, and, you know, it's I'm really grateful that folks took the time out of their time to do it because it really is. It sounds like it's a great educational tool. So I'm really looking forward to talking to people about it. Um, and thank you for being here. And since it's a short show, I'm going to jump right in. Um, We don't want to assume that everybody, even though we do talk about Line 5 a lot on Water Wednesday, uh, but we don't want to assume that everybody knows exactly what Line 5 is or what the resistance looked like. So could you talk a little bit about the broad resistance of Line 5 and a little bit of what it is? Sure, absolutely. So the fight to shut down Line 5 has been going on for years, as you know. Um, as is the battle to stop Enbridge from building a tunnel under the Straits of Mackinac. For those that aren't familiar, the Line 5 is an oil pipeline um, that goes under the Straits of Mackinac, um, which is the most ecologically sensitive place in the world. The pipeline itself is 625 miles long. Um, I think, you know, for those following Line 5, I think many of us were feeling really disheartened coming off the heels of the Michigan Public Service Commission decision back in December um, with the siting approval for Enbridge's tunnel. But I'm just here to say that all hope is not lost. Um, In order to build the tunnel, they still need the final permit from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. And that decision is not expected for several years. So Mm -hmm. the fight lives on. Um, There seems to be some momentum growing on this issue nationally. Sierra Club and other big greens um, have escalated the fight and are really hoping that members of Congress will put some pressure on the Biden administration to revoke the presidential permit. Back in December... Um, They traveled to Washington, D.C. to participate in a federal strategy meeting. They engaged with key members of the Democratic delegation, as well as EPA staff. And they participated in a briefing and attended a reception on Capitol Hill. And as they walked away from those meetings, they were feeling really, um, really good about it. And they deemed it a success. Right off the heels of that, um, Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib gave a compelling speech on the House floor of the dangers of Line 5 and urged immediate action. Um, So I think that there's a lot of momentum building on this. And I think that, you know, as more people are learning about it that maybe don't live in the Great Lakes, I think it's going to resonate with them because it just simply doesn't make sense to be investing any more money in fossil fuel infrastructure um, as the climate crisis continues to escalate. Not to mention the fact that this 70-year-old pipeline poses such a threat, you know, to the drinking water of like over 40 million people, um, not to mention the significance of – all the other things that are, you know, the cultural significance of this for the, um, you know, the, the different tribes, um, tourism. I mean, you can go on. It's it's something that I think a lot of people it will resonate with. So we're hopeful that this um, will continue to build and get more people behind it, as you've seen with like the Dakota Access Pipeline or Line 3. Um, so that's kind of what we're working on right now. That's fantastic. You know, the, we started organizing um, against Line 5 like 10 years ago, and it is, it has grown. It's one of those, it's one of those issues that brings, doesn't matter what um, what side of the aisle you're on, it really does bring people together. Um, and it is really one of those things. I'm so grateful that, uh, that this movie was produced. Yeah, absolutely. And we're, we're also very happy that it's... Uh, has a large indigenous population at the helm of it as well. Yeah, leading the movement. Yes. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I mean, they've been critical critical to the fight. And in fact, um, I think 
was it four of the tribes have um, filed countersuit for the Michigan Public Service Commission decision. So um, that permitting decision is being fought right now in court as well. That's wonderful to hear. And I hope that this will bring more awareness, not just to the issue of the pipeline, but that we need to take cues from indigenous communities because they know how to be good stewards of the earth as well. Um, with that being said, you were mentioning the film. Can you tell us what was some of the inspiration for the creation of this film? Sure. So Troubled Water Chronicles, a 36-day, 425-mile journey on stand-up paddle boards along the Great Lakes. The film was directed by Davis Huber and produced by William Wright and Chris Yahanda. The idea was sparked when they were on a summer paddle trip down the west coast of Michigan and just happened to receive a text alert that a judge had temporarily shut down Line 5 after um, Enbridge failed to abide by um, the state's shutdown order, which, you know, was several years ago. And um, as they were, you know, on this trip looking over Lake Michigan, they couldn't help but wonder how anyone, how any Michigander could stomach the risk of an oil spill on such a beautiful coastline, um, which I think we can all agree, like, how could that happen? How would anybody, you know, what would that look like? So they were inspired to do something. Absolutely. And, you know, for so many people that don't know about it, you know, they were inspired to tell that story. So they created a film to shed light on the man-made impacts of Michigan's freshwater, including Line 5, which, you know, carries 23 million gallons of crude oil and natural gas liquids daily um, through the line, including under the Straits of Mackinac. So um, we're going to have the Southeast Michigan premiere at the State Theater um, the 7 p.m. is sold out, but the 3 p.m. still has tickets available. Um, the filmmakers will be in, and we'll also have a panelist of um, environmental leaders that will be talking about it. And there will be other Michigan dates to come. Um, so if you can't catch this one, there will be other opportunities. That's great. Will people be able to do, like, community screenings and things of the film? Do you know? Uh, there's some talk about that right now, and we're looking into it because there is a lot of interest, which also I think yeah. is just so great. Yeah. Yeah, we should use it as, you know, as much as possible as an educational tool for folks. Um, because once people know about it, they get activated. 100%. As Michiganders, as soon as we know about it, I've, I've, I have yet to see some, you know, somebody actually know about it and not be like, oh, whoa. Yeah. You Even know what I mean? Once they found out about it. Right. What was going on? We'll see it and be like, oh, my God, I did not know all of this. What the heck is going on? What can we do? Um, and especially with World Water Week coming up soon. World yeah. Water Week on March 22nd. I really do hope we can get in as many screenings of it as possible before then. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because it's so important for people to A, get activated and plug in. But also really understand it. They yeah. once you once you understand it, there's no there's no turning turning your back to it. Um, it it really is our duty as Michiganders to protect that water. It's our job. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, well, I'm really so I'm I'm glad that the the filmmakers are going to be there because that really people really like to talk about um, the ins and outs and what it was like. Um, and it sounds like it was quite a journey for them. I'm really looking forward to meeting them. Me too. Um, how can people plug in and take action? We I'm, we're definitely going to be putting things in the um, in the description box below. All the details. Plus, we're going to be sharing it on all of our social media. But um, how can people take action, and what can they do to get involved right now? Yeah. So whether you sign a petition, attend an event, write a letter to the editor, call your member of Congress, you know, all of these actions add up and they all matter. So whether That's you right. come out to the troubled water screening, um, you know, meet some of the environmental leaders that are, you know, on the front lines of this fight um, and see how you can get involved there. Or you can um, take action by urging President Biden to revoke the presidential pipeline permit and shut down line five. Um, we have a link and to, be down to that. that'll comments. Yep. yep. That petition. We also um, are urging you to reach out to um, Congress, so your member of Congress, and help them um, help ask them to put pressure um, on Biden um, to shut down the pipeline and prioritize the protecting the Great Lakes. Um, right. So all of that, you know, and it, you could you could sign that. We have like a petition for that. You can call your you know your your Congress member. You can 
set up a meeting with them, attend a coffee hour, or go wherever they're at, ask them about line five. Um, you yeah. know, really important to keep this issue top of mind. Um, and you can always sign up to receive updates on other events or actions um, or to volunteer at oilandwaterdontmix.org. Um, yeah. So, you know, there's, you know, we're ramping things up. It's an election year. There are going to be a lot of candidates out and about. So asking them about line five, see what they say. Demanding that they make it an issue. Yeah. <laughs> make yeah. sure that they're talking about it. Absolutely. Um, and being able to talk to your, your family and your community about it. And I even have community meetings. It's really how we started. We started having community meetings about it and educating ourselves and then educating other people. And there's a lot, if you go to oil and water, don't mix, there's a, and you, is there's, they have a lot of um, things there to help explain what's happening. Lots of really good research and information on the oil and water, don't mix website um, and Facebook page. Uh, throughout the years have always been really, really grateful for the research that that goes on there and uh, the work that they do. And it's and they keep their website up to breast on what's happening. I've always yeah. appreciated that. Yeah. So a wealth of information and resource yeah. there for sure. Yep. Yeah, for sure. The place to seek information, especially if it's not too technical where people who yeah. are just learning about this will be like, I don't get it. But it's mm -hmm. also technical enough to people who have experience can be updated and say, okay, this is what I think the next step should be as well. So it's, it's yeah. like very conducive to everyone being able to understand what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. And if you no, want to and go, then go see the movie. <laughs> Yeah, for yeah, sure. It's, yeah. It's movie, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Julie. Oh, no, I was just going to say, you can go down the rabbit hole on that website because there's just so much information. Yeah. And, um, you know, when you're fighting against the power money of big oil, you know, you got to spend the time, you know, sorting out what's true and what's yeah. what's not. And Enbridge is notorious for, for put, pushing out lying. disinformation. Yes. yes. Straight out lying. Yep. And we actually have, had a whole campaign that was that, that was called Embridge Lies and Lies yep. and Lies. Yes. Oh, we named our whole campaign that. Our stations and our media helping them push that distorted narrative with their yeah. commercials because, you know, it's a capitalistic society and we're not just going to go into that today, but... We know how yeah, they goes. spent three million dollars on misinformation, like literally exactly. in the past six months. Like they they spend a lot of money <laughs> to to lie to us. As a matter of fact, it was really good when you're talking about it. <clears throat> excuse me. That you mentioned crude oil because ninety percent of the time Embridge lies and don't they do not tell people that tar sands runs through line five. Yeah. A lot of times they talk about propane and things like that. Tar sands is terrible stuff. They don't Very even mention dirty. it. Yes, it's absolutely. the dirtiest form of energy on the planet. And it's the worst um, as far as like the use of water and extraction. And I mean, they've leveled and the whole the boreal fact. forest, <laughs> you know, like to get it. So the situation you is that um, water no longer viable for any other. Use no, it goes in tailings. Whatsoever. Yeah, it's yeah. never be able. It's, you can't put it back in the water table. You're never used able to use it again. They put it in these huge, nasty tailing ponds that you can see from space. They literally NASA's got pictures of them, and yeah. they're terrible. They're it doesn't get any worse than that. <laughs> the amount of water and destruction um, that getting tar sands uh, refined actually creates. So line five, uh, any point along the spill, because it goes through 70 different tributaries throughout Michigan, right? So at any point along the spill, it'd be catastrophic to Michigan. Absolutely. I mean, absolutely catastrophic. It'd even, But certainly in the Great Lakes. Right. <laughs> like, well, absolutely. I mean, and if you even like pull back wider in Wisconsin right now, I mean, the, the, the line five through the Bad River land i mean it's the, the land has eroded so much that the pipeline is right along the river um yeah. so it's not just a michigan issue um mm -hmm. and here it is this is a canadian pipeline but yeah. absolutely. you know the states are the ones that are going to bear the brunt um should there be a catastrophic spill that's right yeah and you know right. i don't you know bashing canada because we have a lot of allies there too but when you think about it Canada throughout history has been notorious 
for using Michigan and other surrounding Great Lakes states as their dumping grounds. They have. They have. And then I just no mean, doubt. We just got through this U.S. ecology thing where, like, yeah. literally the majority of the trash was Canadian garbage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It you was, know? you know, the whole situation, the fact they pulled out some something from a hundred years ago, some to, to actually keep the uh, Enbridge in place here in Michigan. And um, even though our attorney general and our governor were fighting it, um, they, the Canada is not always, not always our friends, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, well, th- so, Oh, the next well, question I, is yours, well, Nicole. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say, it's really easy to feel hopeless in this fight yes. when you start to go, when you start to talk about all these things but i think that that's where it's you know really important that all of our collective actions can add up and that why that's we right. can't stop now because we still have right. the power mm-hmm. yeah absolutely well with that being said do you have any final thoughts that you want our viewers to reflect on or to remember uh as they make their way to ann arbor to come to see that film and that's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, just that, you know, we hope that you get more involved and spread the word. Um, it's important that we all speak up on this issue. Um, we can't just stand by and wait for something catastrophic to happen. We need to be proactive right. to get this um, pipeline shut down for good and um, transition, you know, away from fossil fuels. So you, we, right. can, we can all do that if we collectively work together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Nicole, um, Winona LaDuke, when she was here, for, we had a, a big rally and, and action um, when the when the pipeline, when the uh, easement was uh, revoked here in Michigan. And Winona LaDuke came here and she said it. She was like, the party's over. They, they know that they can't keep building new oil infrastructure. The party's over. Mm-hmm. We have to go through it. They know they're at the tail end of this. And I think they do. They're fighting really. You don't spend that kind of money on um, misinformation unless you know you're at the end. So um, I, I really believe that collectively we we should not lose hope, and collectively we can get this done. Um, and we have to, we have to. It's our response. The Great Lakes are our responsibility. Any way that you slice the cheese, it really, really is. They are. Um, so we're you know. Well, thank you so much for being here with us and talking about this. We're going to put all the information for the, um, for the film in, um, in the description box and in the comments so that folks can plug right in. We're also going to have the petitions and other ways for you to plug in. Uh, the Oil and Water Don't Mix website, all of that will be right there so you can just click on it, go learn more, and plug in the best way that you can. Thank you to all of our viewers, and thank you, Julie, for joining yeah. me. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. And to our viewers, um, it's, you know, it's cold outside. It's really, things are, there's a lot going on in the world. We really have to look out for each other. We really have to take care of each other. And until next time, try to, you know, look out for each other and stay afloat. Bye. Bye. Be careful, homie, you're spilling it.